So, recently I watched a video by Anti-Citizen X about Platonism, and I just had to respond. Why? Because although he does a reasonable job of explaining Platonism, he doesn't actually refute it, and I feel that there are better responses. If you haven't seen Anti-Citizen X's video, please watch it first. He does a very good job of explaining mathematical Platonism and why people care about it. Seriously, go and watch it. Okay, so now I'll explain why I think he doesn't do a good job of refuting it. Firstly, because his only argument against it is an appeal to intuition. Um, it starts at about 646, when he asks whether the example sets exist. A Platonist may well say they do exist. Why? Well, let's look at that. Um, I will outline what I think is the most defensible form of mathematical Platonism. Under this model, we will assert that all concepts exist in some non-material realm. Uh, this is almost certainly not like the space and time that we are familiar with, and so it risks equivocation to say that they exist, um, since that carries a bunch of implications that won't apply here. Um, suffice to say that this kind of existence is very different from our ordinary concept of existence, and we might call it platonic existence. Furthermore, we assert that these concepts are wholly independent of ourselves. That is, even if no people existed to think about these concepts, uh, they would still exist in a platonic sense. Now, to explain this model further, let's construct a metaphor for understanding this non-material realm. Um, and I'll call it the Library of Babel, uh, which I'm borrowing from Jorge Luis Borges. Um, this library consists of every possible book up to a certain length. Um, the first room contains all the books that have only one letter in them. Um, there are, of course, only 26 of these. So there's a book with an A, a book with just a B, so on and so forth. The second room contains all books that have exactly two letters in them. Um, there are 676 of these, ranging from a book that has just AA, AB, AC, so on and so forth, all the way down to ZZ. Um, these rooms go on, possibly forever. The library might be finite, infinite, although a finite universe would only need a finite although immense, library to contain all possible concepts that could apply to that universe. Now, you might object that not all concepts can be expressed in written form, and the Platonist response would be that that's just simply where the metaphor breaks down, that the Library of Babel is a metaphor for this non-material realm, not an exact sort of uh, description of it. No matter, the analogy is still useful for understanding the Platonist position. Now, this Platonist model would say that thinking um, the, con the process of thinking by intelligent beings is akin to wandering through the library of Babel, leafing through the books um, that you find. Um, some books contain references to other books with similar content, uh, content and we might flip between these books in that way, um, and we aren't just leafing through randomly. Now, put that metaphor to the side for a moment. So, when Anti-Citizen X asks if his set of triples exist, the answer from a Platonist perspective is yes. yes. Triples themselves don't exist, as far as we know, um, but the Platonic realm contains concepts, and the concept of triples exists there. Not triples. So there aren't any triples in this realm, but the concept of it does exist, and therefore the set that he describes does exist in this. Let's put it into the library metaphor. Suppose that you can write down his, a description of his triple set, and suppose that when you do, it takes you a thousand letters to do so. Um, we go off to room number 1000 in the library and we search through that and we find the book. And there it is, an exact description of that triple set that, um, that Andrew says in X raises. That book is already in that library eternally present, long before Antithesis and X made the video. Um, the idea is that this library is an eternal, that the, the non-material realm is eternal and so is this library, as a metaphor, um, and it existed long before that. And so, in essence, that's how we can say that he didn't actually make up that concept. He says he pulls it out of his ass, but that's not how the Platonist would see it. Rather, he discovered it. Um, his thinking that went into making that video is akin to him wandering through the library in, using his mind and he discovered that book or a similar one with a description of that set. Because actually there are many different ways of describing the set and so there are many different books within the library which will contain a description of that set. And so that's what he did. He wandered through the, his, his process of thinking the metaphor is that he wandered through that library, he picked out this book, there it is. That's what he presents in the thing. He didn't make it up, he discovered it. Now the neat thing about this analogy is it's actually a pretty good description of the internal subjective, subjective experience that I and other mathematicians have when we do mathematics. Now for me it really does feel as if I'm discovering truths when I'm you know, not just making things up. Um, when I'm in the process of 
um, discovering theorems of proof, you know, finding proof to these theorems, often it does actually feel as if I'm discovering them. So that's actually a pretty good thing about this analogy, is it actually captures that right well. Now, what about anti-citizen X's other assertions about Platonism? Now, the next objection that he makes in the video is this idea that the number two is an adjective, not a noun. Um, he talked about two apples, and that the two in that sentence is an adjective. Um, and therefore, because it's an adjective, it can't exist. Now, this is easily dealt with by the library metaphor. All concepts exist in the Platonic realm, not just nouns. Now, this might seem odd, but remember that this is a realm that consists entirely of concepts. Let's transpose it into the library metaphor. Suppose my dictionary's definition of the word big, for example, takes 300 letters. You know, I look up in my dictionary, there's 300 letter definition of the word, the word big. So what we do is we're in the library, we go into room number 300, we look through the books, boom, there it is. The concept of big exists in the library of Abel. So even though big is an adjective, that doesn't stop it from existing because it's a concept. Um, similarly for any other adjective, verb, adverb, they're all there. And this is the entirety of the argument that anti-citizen X makes against Platonism. Watch the whole video. You know, watch it carefully. Where there is no other argument he makes, he makes that it's, you know, that intuitively it can't be true, with the triples example, an appeal almost to ridicule. Um, and then later he talks about, yes, it's an adjective and therefore it can't um, This is confusing the kinds of existence that we are positing for Platonism. Now, I did mention that it is a kind of equivocation. Um, so you have to be careful about how we talk about existence in the Platonic realm. But there is still a version of Platonism which is not demolished by Antithesis and X's um, argument. Now, the rest of the video consists of explaining a version of philosophy of mathematics that probably corresponds nicely to what we call formalism. Um, his explanation of it is actually really rather good. Um, but simply putting forth this alternative philosophy isn't an argument against Platonism. It's just another way of looking at it. It doesn't establish that Platonism is wrong. It just establishes that here's a different way of looking at it. Now, if you made it this far, you might be mistaken for thinking that I am a Platonist. I am not. Although, Platonism accords with my subjective experience of doing mathematics, I don't believe that my internal experiences are a rigorous basis for philosophy. Um, in fact, I reject Platonism. So, why don't I agree with it? Well, ironically, Antisitism X gives a very good explanation of why Platonism fails in his other Responding to Objections videos, uh, particularly part three, where he talks about pragmatism. I believe that the real failing of Platonism is that it is eviscerated by Occam's razor. We need no non-material realm to explain how people do mathematics, why it works, or where it comes from. We can explain all of these using purely material explanations that are grounded in a physical independent reality. Now, so the key to understanding Platonism is to give an account, oh, sorry, the key to undermining Platonism is to give an account of how abstract concepts, as we know them, can exist in a purely material universe. Consider yes. the concept of bigness. Does it exist? Well, yes, ish. Uh, my understanding of the concept is encoded in my neural connections, processes and chemicals within my brain. Uh, your understanding of the concept of bigness is likewise encoded in your brain, and similarly for each individual. Now, each of these understandings of the concept is an approximation to a common concept of bigness. Now, so does it exist? Well, yes. Where does it exist? Well, across the brains of many people. So. Does that mean the concept of bigness is independent of people? Well, yes and no. What do I mean by that? Well, suppose the planet Earth is completely destroyed tomorrow and all humans with it. Now, the concept of bigness will cease to exist as concepts only exist in brains, computers, books, these places where it can be encoded. However, suppose an intelligent species of aliens evolves in another solar system. They may well con develop a concept of bigness. Um, it almost certainly won't be identical to our concept, but it may well be similar. And, and in that sense, since completely independent intelligences may converge on a similar concept, um, it can be thought of as independent of us, just not independent of intelligent life. Um, similarly, although the destruction of the Earth would take all of our mathematics with it, any other intelligent species would likely um, develop identical mathematical concepts of numbers, arithmetic. Um, might not be true for all of mathematics, but it's true for certainly the foundations and much of it. Um, and this is what we mean when we say that mathematics is independent of us. It means that any intelligence that develops, that develops in the universe, regardless of, you know, can have no connection with us at all, um, is almost certainly going to develop 
um, mathematics that are the identical to ours. That's why it, our mathematics we, is independent of culture in that sense, um, and seems to be independent of our particular human condition. It's just a product of you know, anything that's sufficiently intelligent. Will, sh we we expect should be able to develop um, a mathematics which is identical to ours, at least at a basic level. Now. Given this understanding of how abstract concepts can be contained within a purely material world, uh, we actually have no need of Platonism. Um, the idea of a non-material realm of Platonic ideals adds nothing to our understanding, and we can discard it in line with Occam's razor. And I believe that this is the real reason that Platonism fails. See, not because it is unintuitive, or because it can't deal with some of these other objections, but simply because the Platonic realm of um, the non-material realm of Platonism is complete is simply unnecessary. Alright, thank you for watching. See you next time.